Good morning, everyone. I'm Harry Linz, President of the Commission for Hydrology, and it is for me a sincere pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this uh, opening of the 15th session of the Commission. Um, let me begin first by thanking the hosts for this session, ISPRA. They've done a, an excellent job in, uh, in pulling everything together. It's a big job, to, as you can imagine, to pull a commission meeting together. And uh, they've been very gracious hosts and, uh, and very, very helpful, and we're, we're most welcome to them for that. Um, you will notice this time that there are some differences about the way the commission uh, is, is going to be organized and run this time from, from previous sessions. At least those of you who have attended over time will see these differences. And we'll explain a little bit more about those differences uh, as, as we go forward. Uh, importantly, normally at this time when we have the opening of a session, we have speeches and, ah, oh, I should be closer, thank you. Uh, I feel like I'm eating this thing. Uh, <laughs> And we normally have speeches and presentations and things. And this time, ISPRA has uh, planned something very special for us. And so this evening uh, at 5.30, we will leave for a reception uh, that has been organized that I think is going to be very special for all of us. So uh, again, we're very appreciative uh, to the organizers for, for doing that. This time around, we have a much shorter session. Uh, the emphasis is going to be placed on what we're doing in the future, more so than what we've done in the past. And uh, so I ask all of you for your patience and indulgence as we, as we struggle through, because the last time uh, we had an eight-day session, now we're down to six. So it will be a very different experience this time. We also this time did something very different and innovative. In the two days prior to the beginning of this session, we've had a, a women in hydrology leadership workshop. And I have to say it was, in, in my estimation, in, in, a major success. Uh, I think the women who participated uh, really derived much from the experience. And, and I think it's not just going to be a benefit for them, but, but also a benefit for the commission as we go down the road. Uh, I think that's all I want to say at this point, and what I'd like to do now is uh, turn the microphone over to Elena Menenikova, who's the Deputy Secretary General of, uh, of WMO. Elena? Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm really very pleased to be here in person and to participate in my probably first for last 10, 10 years Commission on Hydrology because my functions changed. So I'm very glad to be back in, in water business. And um, I will say a little more about what Dublin, how WMO perceives and how important water and hydrology is for WMO agenda and for global agenda a little bit this evening. But this morning, I would just like to, to offer a few welcome words. First of all, greetings from the Secretary General. Uh, Professor Talas really planned to be here in person, but uh, usually happens that Secretary General have many a commitments and uh, the one high level actually commitment uh, prevented him from coming here but that allowed me to come so I'm very glad that I can be here representing uh, Secretary General. Um, I know that the the work today will be really innovative and I would like to first thing recognize um, President of the Commission Harry Linz for his innovative approaches and for his leadership in uh, having this Commission as one of the pioneers and doing things which others will then learn and uh, hopefully do again. Uh, this starts with a pre-session uh, document review by electronically, which is very helpful and helps session to be more effective, but also live streaming. Uh, all the thousands of experts which work in the commission and, and are not supposed or cannot be here, they will be following the deliberation of the session. It's very helpful and also very engaging for community. But also, again, I cannot uh, but repeat uh, thanks to uh, those of uh, countries who sent women here for the leadership workshop. And again, it was first workshop in the, on the occasion of Technical Commission. And I'm really very pleased to see the good mix of women and men in this room. I'm aware that it's about 200 participants registered. We don't know how many are present here. We will know it a little later. But the, the faces 
female and male faces mix in the room really makes me feel very good. And I think that we have made some impactful <laughs> decision uh, helping uh, this um, blend to, to, to become a part of the Commission. Uh, of course, uh, what you will be discussing this week is, is crucially important for the um, global agenda and WMO in particular. All scope of things, starting with observations and data management and data exchange and forecasting application, and I would highlight services. So that would be the, the really mainstream of WMO interest and focus on the future, services. And the need for water and hydrological uh, information and services is huge and it's growing. So that is where I would believe you would, you would place more attention during the session. Uh, and um, uh, the other point I wanted to make in my short intro is that integration of hydrology and weather services and climatological services is also becoming right very utmost need for all of us. So we have to work together and this commission is quite upfront on the many issues um, which, uh, which, which countries need. Uh, I was reading the reports with quite quite concern when I saw in Harry's report that the situation with national hydrological services is not perfect and so much needs to be done to, to keep up with helping them, especially in developing countries. I would just like to say that for WMO this remains important priority, so everyone have capacity to, to cope with floods and droughts and water management, so that's probably few key things I would like to highlight in the beginning. Thank you very much and I wish you a very successful session. Yeah, but I would, what we'd like to do is, is bring up our, uh, our Secretariat staff right now so that um, everyone in the room can become familiar um, with the people that um, underpin so much of what we do, but also if you have any complaints during the meeting, you can go to the Secretariat staff. <laughs> so uh, at the end we have Maya. Maya uh, handles conference things and she helped with the arrangements for, for getting things uh, ready here. Uh, next to her we have Natalie. And next to her is Francoise, who's uh, from the uh, Hydrology and Water Resources Program. So uh, she may be familiar to some of you who have visited the offices in uh, Geneva. Um, next to the left of, of Maya is uh, Dominique Barreau, a new member of the Secretariat staff in charge of basic systems. Next to him is Paul Pilon, uh, the chief of uh, forecasting. And next to him is Tommaso Abrete. And um, many of you who have been in and out of our offices in Geneva will be familiar w with these uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, we, we, I just want you to remember that these are people that, uh, that you can turn to all during this meeting. They're here to assist us in, uh, in the conduct of our business. So remember that. To my far right is uh, Claudio Caponi. I think everyone knows Claudio. And, uh, and you can complain to Claudio all that you want. We're, we're happy to have you do so. I will not be found that way. <laughs> and immediately to my right is Johannes Kuhlmann, the Director of Climate and Water at, uh, at WMO. And uh, Johannes has been a, a, a big assist uh, to me in, in, and to the things that we're trying to do here in the Commission. And since he comes from uh, a background of working with the Commission in the past, as well as working closely with UNESCO, uh, he understands the, the issues and the problems that we have to deal with every day. So we're very, very fortunate to have this team uh, of individuals to, uh, to assist us in the conduct of our business. So I thank you all for that. So you're, you're off the hot seat now. <laughs> At this point in the program, uh, item 1.2 would be consideration of the report on credentials. Now, I know that there was a long queue outside of people trying to register and not everyone was able to do so. So instead of uh, taking up this agenda item at this point, uh, we'll pick it up later today, uh, if necessary, even this afternoon. What I would ask of each um, member here is that if you weren't able to register before coming into the room, 
any time between now and and after lunch or early afternoon, uh, if you just wanted to get up and walk out and register, I would prefer that you didn't all stand up at once and go out, but individually, if you need to take a break and you just wanted to go out and use that opportunity to register, please do so. Uh, and then after we have everyone registered, then we can get an accurate accounting for credentials, uh, which becomes important. So, um, so I encourage you to do that in the, in the time ahead. What we will do then is uh, move on to uh, agenda item 1.3, which is uh, adoption of the agenda. And um, the one thing I would say in this regard is that the, uh, the current draft that we're working under on the agenda is, is draft 2. Uh, and draft two has only one change in it from draft one, and that is uh, document 4.3, which is a uh, proposal that uh, the United Kingdom has put on the table. And um, given that we've had document one, or we've had this particular uh, document online for a couple of months now, um, and we haven't gotten uh, any significant feedback recently on it, we're suspecting that uh, this document probably won't change. There probably won't be any additions to it. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll work with this ad uh, agenda item uh, unless you know, something comes up and we, and we see that there's a need for a change. The next item is agenda item 1.4. Uh, which deals with the uh, establishment of, of committees. And um, the regulations uh, indicate that, that constituent bodies may establish a number of different committees when they, when they gather. Um, things like a credentials committee, a nominations committee, a drafting committee. Uh, oftentimes in the past here at the commission, we've dispensed with many of these committees because we really haven't uh, found the need for uh, adopt, uh, in, in bringing all of them together. But uh, there are some that are essential to the conduct of our business. Um, the first that, uh, oh, there's a, a, an issue that, um, that I might say, there, there are a few typographical errors that are in some of the documents. Uh, there are not many, but there are a few. And um, there is an update of, of these typographical changes. And, and under this particular item, 1.4, uh, on the uh, paragraph where we talk about um, credentials committee, uh, we were referring to an item 2.1. That should have been item 1.2. So there's small changes like that. Um, in the past, uh, we've been able to work without of forming a credentials committee um, simply because now with the advent of, of electronic registration and the way we do business today, uh, it's just simpler if we work uh, with the secretariat staff. And, uh, and in this particular case, Maya will be uh, handling things for um, for credentials. And so what I'm suggesting is, is that we can dispense with the formation of a credentials committee. And uh, after everyone has had a chance to register today, then Maya will come in with a report uh, on credentials, which will be a requisite thing for us to go forward then with, uh, with elections, say. Secondly, in, uh, in regard to the election of officers, um, it's normal practice to, uh, to set up a, a nominations committee. Um, but it's not, it's not required to do so for efficiency and effectiveness. I might suggest that, um, that we could actually have the, um, the secretariat staff prepare the list of uh, candidates for office. It just makes it simpler and uh, it's very straightforward. And, and in this particular case, we do have an election, uh, some choices for vice president, um, but those have been placed on the table prior to the meeting. And so uh, I think we can just have the secretariat uh, staff. So hearing no objection, I think we'll, we'll proceed uh, accordingly. Third um, is reference to a, a drafting committee, uh, and, and that 
provides a means of, of, of drawing up the final text of the decisions uh, that get adopted uh, at, at the uh, meeting. We've never used one in the, in the Commission for Hydrology. We've uh, almost always worked uh, through the documents as we go along, and the Secretariat staff uh, works late hours well into the night to make sure things are updated every day based on the discussions that have gone on. So I'm thinking, uh, un unless I hear um, any objections, I think uh, we don't. We can dispense with the drafting committee as well, and again, leave it to the way we've been doing business in the past, which has worked quite successfully with the Secretariat. Uh, let's see. The fourth is a coordination committee, and coordination committee simply um, works through the 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 plans of, of how the session is conducted. Uh, in this particular case, the coordination committee will be made up of myself, the vice president, Xiu Liu, um, and um, maybe the chair of the selection committee when it's formed, and I'll talk about that in a minute, and um, in, 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 with the assistance, of course, of the secretariat. And one of the reasons we try to do this is to avoid any conflicts that may arise uh, during the meeting. If there are groups meeting, um, specially separated from, from the plenary, uh, it's good to be able to avoid conflicts. And so that's what the role of the coordination committee actually is. And finally, there's um, a selection committee. And experience from past sessions has, um, has been that it's really useful. In fact, it's necessary to have a selection committee for selecting members of our advisory working group and, um, and for nominating individuals that might undertake specific tasks uh, for the commission. So assuming that the commission creates this committee, it would work um, according to the proposed rules to guide the composition and functioning of the selection committee as follows. And, and the rules here, um, state that the selection committee um, will be composed by six members, one from each WMO region. And uh, with respect to the secretariat, at the beginning of the session, uh, regional groups would meet to select their representative for each region. What I'm suggesting is that um, before we go to lunch, but after the morning session concludes, uh, the Secretariat staff will be available and each region we would like to have get together just for a few minutes to select uh, who will represent them on the selection committee. One member from each region. So uh, we'll reiterate this when we uh, take our break at lunchtime and we'll be supported by the Secretariat staff in doing that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Dominique will the one who will who will support the the groups in that regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. committee. Exactly. We will say who's yeah, but we'll say who's yeah. going to do each region uh, at lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. And regarding the selection committee's task uh, in 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 choosing members for the advisory working group. Um, there are some guidelines that we can offer uh, to help them in that. There are some, some criteria that, that should be followed. First and foremost is uh, competency. Uh, we want candidates on the advisory working group who, uh, who are highly competent to undertake the work that the commission decides needs to be done. Secondly, it's also important to have regional balance. And so we're looking to ensure that all regions have a voice um, with their expertise uh, on this uh, advisory working group. And finally, it's also important, uh, it's important to the House, it's important to us in this commission that we have good gender balance. And we do have candidates this time, uh, several women candidates, uh, all who come with, uh, with good credentials, very good credentials. So um, looking at competence, gender, regional balance, these are the criteria that will apply uh, to ensure that we have an advisory working group uh, that will be very, very good. In fact, it will be as good as what we've had this time because the commission did an excellent job uh, four years ago at selecting members for the advisory working group.
Claudio, do you want to specify who these contacts will be at this point? Yeah, would you do that? <clears throat> okay, what, what we propose that is at the lunch break, uh, at the beginning of the lunch break, so in order that you are fast because you want to go and have lunch, uh, RA1 will be, the, all the delegates of RA1, it would be nice if they meet, um, I will say where, but they will be assisted by Tommaso Abrate. So gather with Tommaso that is at the, waving his hand at the back. So all candidates of RA1 with Tommaso. Candidates of RA2, so Asia with Paul, that is waving his, candidates of RA3 with me, okay? Uh, sorry, candidates, um, uh, delegates. <laughs> um, you're not candidates yet. <laughs> uh, it's, there are too many elections coming. Uh, uh, delegates of RA4 with Paul again. Paul will have two groups, Region 2 and 4. Region 5 with me, so I have 3 and 5. And Region 6 with Dominique. Now, as in view of the size of the groups, Region 6 will meet uh, in the 3A, is my around, yeah. So in the minus two, is 3A is the name of the, okay. In room 3A, uh, just follow Dominique at the gather around Dominique. Uh, reg we propose that region two and four, the ones run by Paul, are in one side, let's say the, this side of this, of this uh, room, and region three and five on this side of, of the room with me, and um, and region one, which is Tommaso, the one that is missing, is uh, is a uh, meeting in what is the name of the other room? In minus two, uh, it is uh, just outside the three A. If you okay, so region one and six will go to minus two. Region one with Tommaso, region six with uh, Dominique, and the other four region, the even regions on the right, my right and the odd regions, three and five, on my left, okay? The delegates, you just, uh, at the end, have to gather with all of your colleagues, and, and this is, a, is going to be an informal and very quick meeting just to decide who among the delegates will repre represent you in the selection committee, okay? C can I say something, because it, it came to my mind, two, two things. It, I, I think because of the registration in order to avoid the uh, big use. What it would be very helpful for us if it's the principal delegate, if you give priority to the principal delegate of each delegation. So we will be able to count how many uh, countries have valid credentials, uh, how many delegations. So if instead of going all together, you would first, please, uh, is a, uh, please try to get all the principal delegates. If you're already registered, no problem. If not, go while we are discussing here or in the breaks, go down outside and the principal delegate please be nominated. The second thing that I would like to say for the nomination, the, as the rule says that the nominations have to be the, the way of compiling the list of nominees for the, now I'm talking of the elections of the uh, officers, president and vice president, that they should be compiled by the constituent body in session. So. Please, even if we know that there has been emails sent to permanent representative, the official way of nominating is provided to the director, to Johannes Kuhlmann, uh, a confirmation that uh, uh, if it's a confirmation of the candidates. And I, I think you know that all ca uh, you can have nominees also at the last moment from the floor. So all, all nominations have to be, to be official, have to be consigned to the director here, to Johannes Kuhlmann, okay? Today, because the elections, the first, uh, the, the elections in the, in, the, in the program are tomorrow, okay? That's... Thanks, Claudio. Just one last thing uh, when it comes to the selection committee. Um, the person who's representing a region, uh, it would, it's much preferable to not have uh, a representative who's also a candidate uh, for the selection committee. So um, in, in, in choosing the, uh, the person who will represent your region, it should not necessarily, it should not be a person who is a candidate as well, uh, just to avoid any potential uh, conflicts that uh, 
the, in appearance in particular. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop at that point. Uh, so that takes care of agenda item 1.4 for the time being. And again, we will receive a report from, the, uh, from Maya on credentials when everyone has had a chance to register. So we can move on to uh, agenda item 1.5, which is concepts guiding the conduct of the session. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to, uh, to the director of climate and water at this point uh, to give us an overview of, uh, of, of this particular item. Johannes? Yeah, thanks a lot, Harry. Uh, welcome also from, from our side to all of you. I'm very happy that we have so many uh, enthusiastic people around um, in Rome. And I have, from the very uh, short interactions I had with some of you this morning or yesterday evening, I, I got this feeling that uh, uh, there is a good spirit and a good will to discuss the topics that we have on the agenda. I want to say a few words about some uh, bigger uh, developments or principles, and then I will uh, go into more some into some of the details. So I will also maybe already address one or two um, items of 1.6 mm -hmm. and then Claudio can uh, follow up with the rest of everything and mm, that I will forget. And bear with me, um, for me it's also my first time on this side of a commission session. Um, so I'm happy but uh, also a little bit nervous because Normally, I can sit there and nobody will look at me. Now you're all staring at me. So, <laughs> so it's a different story. Okay, but what is the background here? Um, we, I um, want to make two little quotes, and the two little quotes uh, also have to do with what Elena said in her opening remarks. So um, the, the one quote is um, from the governing bodies of the WMO is that uh, maybe the terms of references of all the technical commissions should be discussed and endorsed by the Executive Council. Um, and no, the Executive Council has discussed that they should maybe be endorsed by um, uh, the uh, big WMO constituent meeting that we have every four years. So the, that implies two things. In the Executive Council and the uh, um, WOMO Congress, are, you or some of you are there as uh, supporting staff <laughs> for your uh, permanent representatives. And uh, I don't know if we have any PR in this commission meeting. Do, is there? Yeah, we have one PR. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah, we have Ethiopia here. So yeah, yeah. Maybe there's one other PR, I don't know, but in reality, this community here is not very directly always linked to the PRs. And that holds also for the Executive Council and for the Congress. <clears throat> so what for me is important is that along what Elena has discussed in terms of services, we discussed very clearly in these days here, what is the added value, what is the benefit of hydrology to the bigger service idea in the WMO. So what are the services that WMO should provide and what is the role of water in these services. And to give you an example, we have a very big debate about climate. But what is really the importance of climate for people who are non-scientists? This is not that the climate is changing or that the climate is a variable. The, the important thing is the impact that the climate has on the cryosphere, on the water, on, you know, on water supply, or on the availability of water. So we need to have that, uh, we need to really have that in the back of our minds when we discuss here to make very clear that the water is one uh, important uh, consequence of uh, climate or and that also climate um, cannot be explained without the water cycle. So there is a scientific and an operational aspect to water in this debate that this commission here 
this is the place where we can discuss this and where we can make strong arguments for it. It will not necessarily be made in the Executive Council or the Congress of WMO. So this is um, the first <coughs> reference I would want to make and the second reference um, I want to make is another quote from the EC where the PRs think that oh, the technical commissions are uh, static bodies that have been invented sometime in the past and they deal with technical content and uh, maybe that is not so well linked to the regional processes and to the general WMO uh, strategy and service delivery um, uh, target and I think that the Commission for Hydrology is one very good example how we are organizing a community that is not static and not bureaucratic because this commission has only got the AWG, the advisory working group, and we can very swiftly adapt to new challenges. We have the OPACHI, that is the group of experts that is related to our commission, so maybe I just do two sentences on those two um, functionalities. So the advisory working group is our management body for those who are new to the commission. And this is about the selection of those members. And this group will really steer um, the commission's activities and our community's activities in the next four years. And then we have an open panel of associated experts those are all the people that are connected to our community. And those are the key people to really then implement in between our sessions some of the objectives we will be setting in the second part of our meeting here. So we have this very uh, flexible and very lean structure. And I think uh, there is no leaner technical commission structure in the WMO than the CHY. But that is also not at the very forefront of the conscious of some people who discuss how we should in future organize our work around the WMO and in WMO. So that is also why I think it is good for us to discuss these um, new structure of our uh, AWG, of our advisory working group, and how this structure, how this lean structure can very swiftly uh, respond to the needs that come from the WMO members or that come from uh, your own um, ideas about what we should be doing. So it would be really good, I think, to focus on those value chains. And the value chain is, for example, a, what is a measurement and what does it mean in terms of a service that hydrologists can provide for agriculture or that hydrologists can provide for water managers. We should be talking about this. We should also have a very strong link to the, our own regional activities. We have the uh, working groups on hydrology in the region, and maybe we should also have that <coughs> present when we discuss things here these days. Elena has also made a reference to the um, stakeholder survey that was done in the WMO uh, in this year. And in the stakeholder survey, one main question was again, how well do we operate metrology, hydrology, climate things together? And there is still this gap. This is, the, uh, I am uh, in this discussion for what now, 11 years, and it has always been there. There's always two questions. The one is the cooperation between metrology and hydrology, and the other is the data thing. So these two questions, and people like Wolfgang or so, who have been in the business for much longer, or Claudio or whomever, this, those are, this is uh, apparently what we have as a legacy. It will not go away, but we have to work slowly on these questions. And then there are then two um, small points on the general um, big frame. Somebody has mentioned it already. There is the SDG debate, Sustainable Development Goal. How do we go from the Millennium Development Goals into um, the Sustainable 
development goals where nobody should be left behind and water is one explicit topic. I know that some of your services are <coughs> dealing with the implementation of this um, SDG 6. There's also a very big adaptation debate around the COP community now, the conference of the parties of the climate um, um, community. So there's also some important role for us to uh, support these processes. And there are um, big um, paths that are being decided now in terms of climate finance that is targeted to areas that relate to us. So there are very big uh, things coming up for hydromet investment. Those will be steered by the Green Climate Fund, the banks are involved, other donors are involved, and this will set path dependencies. This is a topic that we cannot ignore. We have to influence these processes so that we have a longer term, a mid to long term development opportunity for hydrological services and hydrological products. Otherwise, this will be a very big investment that will create a lot of work for all of us, that will have a lot of attention from many people, but it will not help us. So we have to take this into account as well. And then my last thing is, Harry Linz has been uh, one of the, yeah, has been the champion in discussing with a strategic um, group in WMO how the technical commissions should position themselves in this whole discussion about how do we go about business in future. And maybe Harry, do you want to say three sentences about this? Yeah, yeah thanks, uh, Johannes. Yeah, the, um, one of the things that came out as the items that Johannes has been mentioning were things that uh, the seed of them came out of Congress uh, last year. And um, they had actually been floating around in discussions for some time before that. But Congress uh, put its imprimatur on these things. And, uh, and this year, Executive Council has a strategic and operational planning um, group, and of that group, uh, there is a subgroup uh, on governance. And um, two presidents, myself and the president of CAS, were asked to participate uh, on the work of that uh, governance subgroup. And w the things that Johannes has been talking about, uh, as they are manifesting themselves in some of the discussions, um, are of some concern for us, um, not the least of which is there are some members of WMO who sense that, well, maybe we don't need some of these commissions anymore, or maybe we don't need so many commissions. Maybe we can combine some. They have overlapping issues and stuff. So there are very serious discussions going on about how commissions could be restructured. Um, and it's uh, one of the things that I've argued all along, and Elena has been a voice in this as well, is that you have to do several things. Number one, you have to ensure that you understand what the strengths and what the weaknesses are of each commission. And so it's incumbent upon the presidents of each technical commission to come and make that case. And that's one of the things that we're working on right now. Um, and the other thing is, is you have to understand the nature of your constituencies. We sort of take for granted in the Commission for Hydrology that we have a unique constituency. You know, we work with the National Hydrological Services as opposed to National Meteorological Services. So we've, we've always been fond of drawing that as a unique identity in the past. But that's not a good enough reason anymore. We have to demonstrate that we're part of the mainstream uh, operations that are going on within the House. Um, so we have to look for those ways where we become uh, better integrated, not just with the MET community, but with these broader issues that the MET community traditionally has dealt with and, well, we may have just sort of pushed to the side. And so that's one of the things that's guiding a lot of the discussions and my input. And so I can only say to you that one of the things I've tried to do is ensure that my fellow presidents and the other commissions and executive council members understand exactly what are absolutely critical functions uh, for our national hydrological services, the things that are 
just indelible um, concerns for them uh, are things that I take forward and say, these are the things that we cannot do without. And by the way, WMO is the only intergovernmental body where the National Hydrological Services have a voice. This is the only place that we can go to the table and, and, and let our concerns and our issues be, be heard and addressed. And so um, I've spoken to Petri Talas about this, the Secretary General. He understands it. Um, but he also understands the imperative of pushing very hard to modernize uh, the way we do business. And so there's a little give and take that's going on, and that's fair. Um, so I just want everyone to be aware that these are things that are facing us. Uh, as we go forward over the next four years, you may hear a number of things come out that could be surprising to you. Um, hopefully, however, the, the core of our issues and our values um, that our services represent are going to be uh, properly handled um, as we go forward uh, over the next four years. So I, I think I'll stop at that point. Um, hold on. I think what I'd like to do is, having said that, and having heard what Johannes has said, if there are any questions from the floor, I, we'll do our best to, to answer your questions. No? Well, you can, you can corner us at any point during, uh, during the session. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be happy to, at least to the extent that we are aware, uh, to convey to you exactly what we do understand about the process and, and how it's proceeding. Uh, with that, I think we can move on to agenda item 1.6, uh, which is, you, you want to start that? With organizational questions. And so, Johannes, go ahead. Okay, so um, Claudio will introduce exactly how we operate on our website in a minute. I want to make a few other comments and also reiterate what has also been said because I think it's important. So day one here is about assessing where we are, talking about what we have done and thinking about what our experience is. And from tomorrow on, it's about the future. So from tomorrow on, we, we would like to really discuss with you the items. That's why we also will not present um, all the documents all the time on the screen. So uh, we assume, <laughs> we hope that you know what is in the documents that you are interested in. So we really want to have an open discussion here about the content and we don't want to walk this, co this community here through documents. We will have uh, introductory presentations by the people from the Secretariat who lead the different topics we're going to talk about. Those will also um, include all the pre-session discussion. So that's why we have asked all of you to assume that 12 hours before the schedule of the document that um, we will talk about, we will not take your comments into account anymore. The document discussion um, has been very helpful and very successful this time. I think we had more than ever uh, comments in our pre-session discussion, so some of you and also some other people who are not linked have been very active, and I think it's a very good sign. Um, so that is um, my plea to really um, make sure that you know what is in the document and the documentation <clears throat> also this time is different for those who, of you who have been in other um, commissions. It's shorter and it's focused on what should be the decision of this body. What do we want to um, co do ourselves? What do we want to commit to do ourselves? And what do we want other people in WMO to know? So what is our resolution? What is our decision towards the WMO community on those things? So please, when we go into the topics these days, please be focused on what is, uh, please discuss in depth 
the topic, but please focus on what is the decision we want to take, what is the outcome of this session, what is our message about this topic. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, da -da -da -da, this Claudio can do all this there. We have uh, in session um, translation, uh, interpretation, I think it is. Uh, <laughs> so there, that's why we have interpretation, because people don't know the difference between translation and interpretation. For the, all the people in those little boxes at the end of the room, please try to speak slowly. <coughs> I, I do the same error. When I get excited, I start to talk very quickly, but it makes the life very, very difficult for the people in the little windows behind you. So please try to speak slowly. Um, and we have uh, an online streaming of the session. So um, be aware that uh, the people who speak will be uh, streamed online. So we want to be transparent, we have no secrets, but uh, make sure that your hair is nice when you walk into the room <laughs> and that you have a nice makeup and wear proper suits and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I want to uh, give the word to Claudio to explain a little bit more how website work. You have uh, on your seats, every two of you should share one printout page where the access to the documents ex is explained. But Claudio. Yeah. Okay, well, if, if Johannes goes fast, you have no idea <laughs> what is in, in store for you. I, I tend to speak very fast, so please stop me when that is. Okay, this, this page, could you scroll down to, to show the top? There. And I don't know, I hope that those of you at the back can see. If you can, please tell, because it's important. This page is the, is the mother of all pages for CHY. Okay, it's, it's very important. And... Uh, if you don't know how to get here, please raise your hand because I can go back and show you how, go but, but I am assuming that you have been at least once in this page. Is, is that true? Is there somebody that doesn't know how to get here? Okay. From this page, you can get all the information for the session. At the, I'll, now I'll try. At the top, you have the, the documents in Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. Let's click on the French, for instance, just to... And uh, you see there are three folders. I have to do the same because my high side is <coughs> impossible. In, in the, you have three sol folders. Normally, at the beginning, now, the f all the documents are in the first folder, which is draft for discussion. So if you could click on the first there and you have the there are 17 documents okay if you have more documents it is spam it's not us <laughs> and uh, and uh, even if the documents are in the language the title of the documents is always the same it's always in english okay the number and the title so so if you click for instance in uh, ah, and this is important if you click on the, let, let's click on this one, on the number one, document one. This opens a viewer. In this case, you are just viewing. You cannot edit. You can, and in the viewer, depending on the browser, we couldn't fix this, some internal links work and other not. So if you want to do it fast, this is the way. Now, if instead, could you close, go back? Uh, you should. Versus any, move it, move it over so this, see the video part, okay. If you want to download the documents, there are two ways. One, you see these three dots? You click on the three dots, and opens this window, and then you click again on the three dots, here, and that downloads, you can download a copy of the document. Now, I have been told to repeat this every day, okay, and several times, if you are going to make an intervention or a comment to change a document, the only way to be sure that you are using the right version is to download in that moment the document from the website. 
So if I suppose that many of you might have downloaded all the documents before coming here. Uh, you can do that for reference, but please, when you are going to make an intervention or suggest a change, always do this, download the document, because there might be minor changes, as, uh, especially in the different languages, so please use always the version online. The official version is the version that is online, okay? Uh, there are other ways, if you go back uh, here in the, if you click, okay, go back, open any document, okay? At the left, I don't see here, but there is here on top. No, 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 don't, don't do that or you will lose the here. It's here. There is a, a, a menu that says file. And you can also download from there. If, if you go here, here. Alto sinistra. I can lo stai mostrando. There, file. If you click on file, there is a menu. File, file. Uh, file, primo sinistra. Okay. And you can do save as. If you click on save as, there will appear here something. Okay, download. Don't do it, but you click on download and you download the document, okay? There are two ways of downloading. Okay. Now, as if you go back to the menu, sorry. Okay, go back, one back to the folders. And now open them in English, it's easier for me to... If you can go here to the English. Okay, the second, uh, uh, the, the second folder, provisional report. When, when we discuss documents... No, 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 don't, don't open, just show it. Uh, now it's empty, but when, you, when we go on and we approve documents during the session, those 70 documents, they will go out of the first folder and into the second, okay? And uh, so let's suppose that we discuss a document, we approve, we agree, and, and uh, the draft will disappear from here and will go to the provisional report and approved document. And in the session archive, if there are intermediate versions, like if we discuss and we don't agree on a document, so we have a draft one, a draft two, the old versions will be in the session archive. So you will always have the history of the various version of the documents. Okay, now, if, if one, one last thing about documents, there are 17 documents, but, and there are three if documents. If you go here, if you click on the left, the, here, no, no lo fare tanto grande, because no. No, no. Go to information documents. To the, click on the menu here. Here. Okay. There are three information documents only. So in total you have 20. The first one I hope you have seen, well I suppose you have seen, if not you would not be in this hotel. Because it's the material arrangement, the one that explain how to get here. And how to get the visa. So the the other, the INF2 and INF3, are the reports of the advisory working group and the reports of the Secretary General to complement the report of the Secretary, of the President. So this will, as you see, they have already been translated in all languages. The difference of the INF is that we don't have a different menu. They are all here. If you want to see the report by the last two letters here, for instance, this report is in Arabic, English, uh, Spanish, French, etc. Okay? So you can download the reports. These reports are going to be discussed. It's the next item. It's what we are going to discuss today. As Johannes has explained, today is dedicated to the past, to what was done. And this all in this report, so you can consult those to check if what you think. And if you don't understand something, ask question, but it's on everything is in this report and will be recorded. Last thing is the, if we go to the left menu now, Session information first. That's the main page. Okay. okay, just a couple of things for the session information. Well, the conference information registration desk already you know. Please, 
the third bullet, this is a paperless session. We have been telling you it's as much as possible a paperless session. We, and we hope that all of you brought a laptop and a working laptop with it. If there is any, if you have any problem, if a laptop is not working, if we were in the secretary, we would give you a land one, but here we cannot do it. You can request on an ad hoc basis, on a one to, that, to the secretariat outside, that they print you a copy of a particular document. We are not going to do that on a normal case. This is only on request. If you request a part, sorry, I have, my laptop is not working and I am interested in flood forecasting, please print 421. You go outside and, and they will support you, okay? But just on an exceptional case. Well, one more thing, something that you know, tentative work plan here, if you click on this, do on that. I've lost it. Here. You click on the. Okay, you know, in WMO parlance, the agenda is just the number of items, which item is which. But what other normal people call agenda, we call tentative work plan, which has the hour. So here, you have the order in which we are going to discuss the items. Uh, and uh, uh, also other events, for instance, today, this is what was already mentioned. Uh, and we will repeat, at 5.30, we will end a little earlier, at 5.30 there are, will be buses departing for the opening ceremony in Campidoglio, Capitol Hall. It's all in your, I see from your faces that not many of you knew that this was in there. So I'm glad that I'm not boring you completely. Go. You are here, the program, and you see we have a special visit to Musei Capitolini, half an hour, and then a nice recession on a roof over Foro Romano, so even if your, if your experience on the commission, on the rest of the is not good tonight, make it worth to come here, okay? And, but you also have all the other, if you go, scroll down, if you scroll down, you have all the program, when is it happening? Of course, it's not precise to the minute, it's saying morning session, afternoon session. We will try as much as possible to keep to this. So even if we are in advance or late, we will try, because there will be people that will be coming from outside for specific items, and we will try to respect this. Okay, if you can go back to the main page, to the back here. The, the next one, I just want to show you the next one, how to find and download document. I, I'm not sure if this is the page you have on your... There is an explanation of how to download, but please go at the bottom, at the very bottom. The, at the bottom, or fondo proprio, here. Um, you can see, I understand that you have a printed copy on your desk, but please not, the very, no, no, Puju. Here. If the, the, the sentence in black, when, when we will be discussing documents, if you have an intervention and you want to propose a change and something, uh, the way to do it, apart from saying it, you have to send comments. We, we have set up a session mailbox, which is here in chyplenary at wmo.int. So if you look at this website, you, you want to make an intervention. You say, we think that Claudio needs a raise in his salary, for instance. <laughs> Just, uh, you send it to the plenary and, and, uh, and uh, we... Okay, it's the only way we can record exactly what you think. Now, seriously, whatever you want to say, please send it here so we are sure that it's going to be taken into account. But you have to say it first. You cannot send a comment that you have not made in plenary because you have to give chance to the others, delegates, to agree or disagree with what you are saying, okay? Okay, if you can go back to the... I. Well, here, if you want to see the webcast, this is thanks to our host of ISPRE. There is a streaming, uh, uh, well, let's go here. You don't need to, to do it now. Uh, the last thing that uh, I would like, if you go back up to the left menu, to the left there, there are, Please click on background documents there. I don't know if you are aware, we have tried, as this is a paperless session, there are, and we're trying to be short, there are a lot of links inside the documents. 
So, and the idea is that you go through, if you, if you download it, you can do it very easily. That when you read, if there is a reference to a resolution of Congress of EC, you click and you go straight, and we have extracted precisely the resolution, not the whole book. So you can go and read in a very efficient way, but in case you want to have a reference to everything, every, we hope we have taken all that is reference in the documents is in this page, in all the languages, okay? So let, let me see because I cannot see from here. You have the commission, the last commission of hydrology report, you have last three congress, you have all the quotes, if there is a report that was quoted is there, all the resolutions and decision from the last Congress NEC, and at the bottom, the links to other sessions. And for instance, for those people that are wondering what is the precession discussion, if, if you click on the first link, you go straight off under uh, links and documents at the bottom, the first link at the bottom here. Here. No, the next one. Here, the first link under links and documents. Here. Yeah. This go to the page of the precession discussion. So you can, if you want to see what was discussed on the different topics, etc. I'm not even explaining this page because I know that all of you have visited several times during the last couple of months. Okay? And we just, very last thing, going back to the, to, to the previous, we just opened today a, a last uh, here presentations. We have asked people, experts, secretary, not to do presentation as much as possible. To live. But if you really have the need to show something, uh, we will store it here for after it's been made for people to. To recall it, okay? It's in the it, at the time. I, I think now it's empty because there has been no presentation yet here. Under it's empty, no? Okay. I think I think it's empty. No, no. The the part that says presentation in the here here in the left menu. Okay, it's empty. Okay, this is good. It means not spam yet. Okay, I, is there any, please, it's important that you really feel very confident with this site because once we start working fast, we, the idea is that you may get lost if you are not you. So if you have any question, please ask Harry. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, the only thing I'll say in response is this, you now understand why Claudio was told you're going to have to say this over and over and over again all week long. Uh, it is, it's a very efficient site, but as you could see, there is a lot of material and a lot of links. So uh, it does bear some, um, some close scrutiny, but everything you could possibly need for, for reference is, is contained there. So it's, uh, it's very impressive. They've done a, they've done a good job. The yeah, just, just a very, very short reminder. We have um, also in-session translation. That means that all the drafts will be translated into your languages, which also means we have to work out how we can manage to translate all the documents. And therefore, I would ask you to be focused and concentrated. We might need in some cases produce a draft two of a document if there are serious concerns about the content or if there's anything that is not yet in the document that you want to see in the document we can we you those the documents we have up is are the proposed frames for the topics but you really decide on the content so it's your document it's not ours please make sure everything you want to have in a document is mirrored but please also make sure that we don't discuss it five times because if we go to a draft three or yeah, unimaginably to a draft four, it, 
it will it will kill us in translating the stuff. So we will have a problem. Uh, we we cannot work through that. So please be focused and make sure that if you are happy with the document and you can interpret your views, please accept it. If you need to change it, please change it once. Thanks. Thanks for that, Johannes. Okay, um, one thing I would like to add before we leave this agenda item uh, relates to the pre-session discussion. Uh, this is not the this is not our first dance with this exercise. We've we've tried this before. Uh, we tried it four years ago, before session 14. We tried it eight years ago, uh, before session 13. In those cases, we were not as sophisticated about the way we went about it. Um, eight years ago, you may remember that we had something called an e-board, an electronic board. Uh, it wasn't called the pre-session discussion. And I think uh, from all the material that we put up, we may have had one, uh, one response. And four years ago, we made a little bit more effort to advertise what we were doing, um, and maybe we had two or three responses. But it really wasn't substantive enough. This time, we put a lot of effort into this. We really wanted to make this work. And, uh, and I have to say, I, I express my gratitude to everyone in this room who, uh, and their colleagues who have um, made inputs, because this time we've had more than almost 50, I think, uh, distinct pieces of, uh, of input. And many of them have been extremely <coughs> substantive. Uh, it's been very, very impressive. What's important here is that we've decided that we will leave the pre-session discussion up and operating throughout the session. So it hasn't been closed. If, uh, if anyone feels that uh, they want to refer to one of the documents, make an additional comment, they can do so during the session. And I want you to realize that as we go through documents, um, the staff will be updating based on those inputs to the pre-session discussion uh, the contents of the documents. To the extent possible, we're trying to accommodate all the views that were expressed um, in the pre-session discussion. And, uh, and then finally, at the end of the session, we will leave this material online as a permanent archive so that we can uh, see exactly uh, what the comments were and how things transpired. And then one could also go to that, see what the comments were, and see how they were responded to in the document itself. So it, uh, it's a particularly nice uh, archive to, to have at our disposal. If there are no questions, or are there? If there are any questions on this issue? OK, seeing, seeing none, uh, what I would suggest we do at this point, we've gone through a lot of these things pretty quickly this morning, I realize. Uh, but since we also have an awful lot of uh, delegates here who have not had a chance to register yet, what I would suggest is, is we adjourn right now uh, for 15 or 30 minutes or however long it takes for everyone to, uh, to get registered. And then when we come back, we'll be able to go through, uh, I think, the, the credentials. Okay, that, well, I'm, I'm, I'm being uh, advised that maybe what I should do is, is we would like to have you back in 20 minutes. And so uh, there still may be some people who haven't been able to register at that time, but uh, let's get back um, at 11.05. Uh, so thank you very much. We'll adjourn at this point. <laughs>